You've just entered the theater of an alien sky. If the words and images seem strange to you, there's a reason for this. Our world was once a vastly different place. To experience this won't hurt you, and there is nothing to fear. Ancient images of the cosmic ship give us an opportunity to question many popular assumptions about the ancient sky. Our message is that the sky we see today does not provide a useful guide to the ancient experience. Extraordinary celestial formations above the early sky worshippers provoked an explosion of mythic images. If we can see these images as a reflection of concrete human experience, a reconstruction of the events is possible. For observers on Earth, a revolving crescent in the polar sky, reflecting light from the sun, turned visually around a central orb or star in a daily cycle of brightening and dimming. In human imagination, that revolving crescent was the ancient ship of heaven. One additional feature must be included, as we've earlier noted. The crescent appeared above a cosmic pillar, inspiring a diversity of mythic images, all pointing to the same underlying form. One form in the sky, fully explaining what will otherwise appear as hopelessly contradictory images. In our previous episode, we noted the strict identification of the crescent ship with the horns of the Bull of Heaven. Inhabitants of the Celestial Kingdom sailed on these horns in the daily revolution of a crescent-like ship. We also noted the absolute identity of the Bull's two horns as the twin peaks of the cosmic mountain. We have further suggested that Egyptian and other images of a pillar god either holding aloft the ship or standing upright in the ship must be understood in terms of the underlying equation of the ship itself with these outstretched arms. This equation can be fully elaborated. The pyramid texts say that the deceased king ascends to the sky to find his place in the cosmic ship, within the arms of autumn, they say. This identity of the ship and the enclosing arms of the sky is confirmed again and again in Egyptian sources. The king is raised up in the day bark within the arms of Anubis. Make ready your arms for me, O Ra, come and ferry me over to yonder side. In the same way, the god Osiris sails on the two arms of Horus. Any doubt on this equation is removed by the description of the ship in the coffin text. Her starboard side is the right arm of Atum, her larboard side is the left arm of Atum. But a huge confusion is taken over the language of day and night due to the subsequent radical change in celestial conditions. In the ancient planetary configuration, the crescent, the mythic ship of heaven, was descending to the left at sunset and beginning to grow more bright amidst the darkening sky. The ship achieved its greatest splendor when the crescent reached its position directly below, at midnight. The ship's brightness then began to diminish as it rose to the right, and it was at its weakest when directly overhead. In today's reckoning of time, that would be called noon. But when Egyptian texts describe the primeval sun growing bright, the translators can only think of one thing, our familiar sun rising in the east. That fundamental misconception sets in motion a series of irreconcilable contradictions in all of the standard translations. The Egyptian sources are far and away the most complete references on this question. In unequivocal terms, they describe the vehicle of the gods, the ship of heaven, in two phases of a daily cycle, a phase of brightening and a phase of dimming. These phases have nothing to do with the appearance of the sun itself. 
The sun was not even present within the visual theater of the gods. It was simply the external source of the illuminated circumpolar crescent and its daily phases of brightening and dimming. As commonly translated, the coffin text expressed the hope of every king upon his death to find his place in the night bark and the day bark, like Ra, every day. But the translators can offer no natural reference for the terms. All that is literally meant are the two contrasting phases of growing bright and growing dim, of growing strong and growing weak. Strength and weakness, life and absence of life, waking and sleeping are the literal meanings of such terms. The boat in the phase of growing bright was named Atet, meaning literally strong or growing strong. And the boat of growing dim was named sectet, meaning literally weak or growing weak. Once the literal meanings are clear, the mistranslations become transparent. May you sleep in the night bark, sectet. May you wake in the day bark, atet. A popular translation reads. The implied connections to sunrise and sunset are provably incorrect. And we can make this clear by simply observing the regional positions of the ship and the directions of the ship's motion in its daily cycle. Did the ship actually move upward in its phase of dimming and descend in its phase of brightening? As we intend to establish beyond any reasonable doubt, the position of the ship was below in the phase of brightness and above in the phase of weakness. That means a descending motion of the ship as it began to shine brilliantly in the sky and an upward motion as it began to dim. The directions of movement and the associated conditions of brightness and dimming are all critical to the integrity of the symbolism. The coffin text described the gods sailing upstream in the so-called night, literally the phase of dimming, exactly the opposite of the solar interpretation, while another spell announces that the sun shines forth when going downstream from the region above to the region below, again the opposite of the solar interpretation and the literal meanings are the key. May you sail upstream toward the upper region in the night bark, literally the ship of dimming, and downstream toward the lower region in the day bark, literally the phase of brightening or growing bright. Such texts as these are complemented by numerous others, all confirming that the ship of heaven is indeed an acid test of our reconstruction. We'll return to this explicit evidence in our next episode.